From the heart of the Cape, this is Barnstable Today for Tuesday, September 23rd. Welcome aboard. I'm Mark Mumford. The licensing authority is notifying the more than three dozen establishments in town that met the challenge of a police underage drinking sting. That's our top story. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kevin Friel. Sixteen businesses were burned by the July sting. However, 38 other businesses refused to sell beer to a 20-year-old undercover police buyer. Yesterday, the licensing authority discussed what action to take in their regard. Next order of business is a uh, perhaps a discussion on the 38 establishments that did ask this individual for his identification and whether or not we should uh, notify them that they did uh, use due diligence. Any discussion? Commissioner Bremen? I have mixed emotions about it. I think that a letter, are we sending out commendations for the doing their job? Perhaps so we'll hear from the police if they'd like to have a letter sent or how we would oh, recognize these 38 license holders that, that did uh, use diligence. I think, it's a, I think it's responsible to do that uh, in as much as the attorneys have pointed out to us. Um, it helps them in their learning experience to know that they were tested and that they they have appropriately done that. It's not a congratulation. It's, a, it's just a recognition of due diligence and that, yes, we were there. And the ABCC does it, and we try to do everything they tell us. <laughs> so they do notify license holders? Yes, they do. Okay. Ms. Chair, if I might uh, on that, is, is perhaps if uh, rather than a letter that uh, we posted this on the, uh, the on town the uh, TV, it, it's uh, it, the, the people in the town also know, and it, and it, and it makes everybody I'd, aware of what the I'd police are doing. I'd be happy to read doing. those names into the record if you like. Yes, why don't you yeah. uh, read the names of the uh, license establishments that uh, did ask this individual okay. underage for a identification? The sting was, the sting was conducted on uh, 7 8 Ten establishments at that time were in compliance. Katuit Liquors. Mallory Dock, the Quarter Deck, Shanghai, Chrissy's on Ocean Street, the Dockside Restaurant, the VFW, TGI Fridays, Bobby Burns, and Keenan and Riley's. On July 26th, there were 13. The Barnesville Bottle Shop, Jack's Pizza, Bud's Place, Parker's Liquors, Mike's Pizza, San Diego's, Luke's Sur Super Liquors, Willow Tree Market, Trader Ed's, Puffer Bellies, British Beer Company, 19th Hole Tavern, Schooners. Before I read the last, I just wanted to note to the uh, board that there are um, clubs and restaurants and bars. We tried to do a cross-section, and roughly we visited half of the establishments. There were around 130 total licensed establishments in the town. I think we visited about half of them. Um, August 18th, 08, Spanky's Clam, Clam Shack, Tommy Doyle's, Baxter's Boathouse, the 99 Restaurant, Kettle Hole, Up the Creek, Elbow Room, Tiki Port, Fresh Catch, the Duck Inn Pub, Columbus Cafe and Pastries, the Rhubar, Gringo's, Puff the Magic, and Ardeo's on Main. Sure. Now, we have an agreement that a, a letter would be sent by this authority. Okay, we agreed on that. I thought they wanted to post it on the website. And post it on the website? Or? Okay. I, don't need, I, I just think they should know. We don't need the letter? I was trying to say, I was trying to say the police department postage money. Oh, we weren't going to do it. We were going to ask Chris to do it. Okay. <laughs> well, you can work it out. Just a notification somehow that they were notified. Another session in the town hall hearing room last evening, this time involving the planning board, demonstrated some of the complexities involved with running a public hearing. I just wanted to ask a question. We, can, we cannot have any conversations without, this, uh, without him being present. Is that true regarding this development and if you're it's in a, being continued? You're in a public hearing. Yes, that is true. Okay. So you, you, you want to, um, um, the applicant has made a request to continue. Um, so if you have discussion and testimony, then you're conducting the public hearing. Right. So, um, so we as a regulatory agreement, though, this is something that can be negotiated. So you could certainly um, discuss it um, at, a, at another posted meeting. The cooling fall temperatures are not putting a chill on bird watchers who have a special opportunity coming up this weekend. 
We went to West Farnstowell to find out more. Well, we are here on a spectacular early fall day with Ian Ives, mm -hmm. sanctuary director for Mass Audubon Society's Long Pasture Facility. And I think we ID'd in the, uh, in the intro from the studio that we're going to West Barnstable, but we're really in the village of Barnstable and explain to us uh, exactly where we are, Ian. We are in the village of Cumaquid, right off of Route 6A on Bone Hill Road. Uh, the very end of Bone Hill Road to the last driveway on the left, looking out over Barnstable Harbor. And uh, you're going to be taking part in an event coming up this weekend with Nina Coleman, the manager at Sandy Neck, and we have a great view of Sandy Neck from here. And uh, tell us what's coming up exactly. It's going to be a bird walk that will uh, focus on migratory species of this area in September. It will be a great opportunity to get out on, on Sandy Neck Barrier Beach, and hopefully, if we have the right weather, and a little bit of luck, we'll get a chance to see a large variety of shorebirds. It's scheduled for Saturday, 10 to noon, and if the weather is even half as good as it is today, it will be spectacular. And uh, a great time of year for bird watchers here on the Cape. Yeah, September is, is around the peak for a lot of, uh, again, a lot of these shorebirds that migrate through our region. A lot of it has to do with whether or not there are tailwinds bringing birds through or uh, suitable weather for staging for these birds. But um, Sandy Neck is... is is located in such a way that birds tend to congregate as they're making their way down the Atlantic coastline. And of course, no way to guarantee bird behavior. Uh, mm -hmm. Odds are good. Odds are good. Uh, but what are some of the uh, more prominent birds that you might expect to see on a walk like this this weekend? Well, there's a good chance of seeing terns. A lot of the younger terns that fledged this year are still about foraging on the beaches of Sandy Neck, especially out at the outer part of the beach, uh, around the tip there. Um, there's a good chance of seeing some oyster catchers, which are a larger showy bird. Good chance of seeing some plovers, uh, some willets. There still be, may still be some um, young ospreys that have fledged this year that are still gaining strength and exploring before they follow their parents down to South America. Uh, some northern harriers. Uh, and at this time of the year, there's a good chance that we'll see some ducks starting to migrate down. Ducks will overwinter in Barnstable Harbor. Ducks such as black ducks and scops and eiders, scoters, they utilize the bay for food and protection in the winter, and uh, uh, they can start arriving as early as mid to late September as well. That sounds like a great variety, and of course, uh, the summer season winding down a bit, uh, a beautiful facility you have here at Long Pasture, and I guess uh, even though the summer's winding down, uh, you're not winding down, you have a lot of things, uh, busy schedule coming up through the fall as well. Yeah, we're, we're now gearing up to do programs throughout the year. Um, we've got some added uh, employees here to help us do that. Uh, Jody Montoya is our new education coordinator, and we've got uh, several volunteers that are helping us maintain programs throughout the season. So we'll be doing, um, this, this September, we'll be doing one more Cuddy Hunk trip out to uh, Cuddy Hunk Island, the Elizabeth Islands. It's a beautiful spot. We'll be doing bird walks such as these. We'll be doing a variety of uh, workshops and lecture series throughout the season. We're holding a, a farm festival here on October 25th, which will feature local farmers that are engaged in sustainable agriculture. That should be a lot of fun. That'll be right here at the sanctuary as well. That's a beautiful spot. Not a bad place to hang out and work, huh, even? Not a bad place. Right. Not a bad place. We're into some great bird watching weather right now. Tonight, mostly clear skies with temperatures dropping down near 40. Then tomorrow, plenty of sunshine with highs in the lower 60s. On the meeting front this evening, the Waterways Committee meets at 8 over at the MEA conference room on Finney's Lane. Tomorrow, an accessory affordable housing program hearing in the town hall hearing room at 6 in the evening. Old Kings Highway in the West Barnstable Community Building at 7, and the ZBA in Town Hall at 7 as well. And a couple of events coming up this weekend at the Senior Center on Saturday, a travel expo from 9 until noon. And a caregiver conference co-sponsored by the Brain Injury Association of Massachusetts on Sunday, running from 9.30 until 3. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Kevin Friel. We'll meet you right back here tomorrow. I'm Mark Mumford.